On Friday the 25th of August, at the send-off of gallant Brigadier John Kiboko in Nyandarwa, something came out in the speeches, and specifically in the speech of Raila Odinga, that shocked me to my bones, that really, really disturbed me. And in my opinion, it should disturb all Kenyans of goodwill, wherever in the world they are. Now, you remember in a recent recording, I analyzed yeah, the so-called secret meeting between President Ruto and Ray Lodinga in Mombasa. Now, regarding Gashagwa Deputy President while in Machakos, in a church, had talked about this meeting. And he had told very worried Azimio supporters that some kind of deal had been struck and that Azimio supporters should not expect anything more from Raila Odinga. And of course one should be expected at least, at the very least, to speak the truth when they're in a church. However, many of us did not believe Gashagwa until the nation yeah, came out with an exclusive story reporting that same secret meeting and even giving us details of how Ruto rejected the discussion of the high cost of living being included in talks with the opposition. And I took the bait and I made the video I made based on my journalistic knowledge that when a newspaper like the nation, yeah, with experienced journalists, yeah, breaks a story like that one, it is most probably true. But I even went beyond that and I talked to a few people and we all agreed that the nation's story was accurate. There was actually a meeting. But yesterday, at the send-off of Brigadier Kiboko, Raila was emphatic. He said, people are saying I met with Ruto. Where did I meet with him? Where? Can somebody show me? Can somebody give me details of this meeting where I met with him? And I scrambled around because I'm very concerned about the information I give you on this channel. I make every effort humanly possible. To ensure that I give you accurate information. Yeah. I scrambled around. And I discovered to my horror. That actually. There is a very high likelihood. That such a meeting never took place. That such a meeting is pure fiction. For narrative purposes. Now of course after such a conclusion. The immediate question has to be, how did the nation end up with a so-called exclusive story about such a meeting? How did it happen? The answer to that question is what is terribly disturbing. There can be only one conclusion. And that conclusion is that in the country called Kenya today, we have people who are so skilled People are such experts in planting stories in the media to support their narrative. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, to be honest, that is not such a difficult thing to do. Especially if you're a government in power. Because the way things go, Vile Kunayandanga, is that as a journalist, when a government source speaks all over the world, that source is given credibility, is given a certain weight. Yeah. Why? Because they are a government-based source. Now, unfortunately, when you have a crooked, corrupt government in power, then what it means is that somebody can come up with a scheme like this scheme 
which fooled the nation newspapers, which fooled experienced editors and journalists, and actually succeed in planting a story about something that did not happen. In other words, planting pure fiction that ends up as the headlines of a local daily. And the same headlines are picked up by one Kumekucha Chris and he puts together a video. And this video reaches people who take Kumekucha Chris very seriously. That is the damage that was done. And I sincerely apologize to all of you from the bottom of my heart. Please forgive me for that serious very serious mistake. So, let us reanalyze this. There was no meeting which took place between Ruto and Raila. But then come to think of it, for a long time now, for many months, the government has been very determined to convince Kenyans that Ruto has met with Raila. So we must ask, why? Why do they want to send across the message that a meeting has actually taken place? Why? Now the first place we must look at are the mysterious dark forces, the mysterious very powerful forces which seem to be controlling our politics, yeah, playing a major role in the decision making of our politics. And these same powers have been pushing very hard for dialogue, for Rael and Ruto to sit down and discuss. And these same powers have been pushing very hard for Rael and Ruto to do what Rael and Huru did and come up with a handshake, cooperation, yeah, a way to work together. Even if it means... Yeah, Ruto giving up some slots in his government and dividing them amongst Raila people. Like it was done after the 2007 troubles between Kibaki and Raila. Why do they want this to happen? So that the country can return to some semblance of peace. So that the country can settle down. So that these powerful forces can continue with the business as usual. Okay? They are not interested in the ordinary Kenyan. They are not interested in the suffering ordinary Kenyans are going through. And therefore they are least interested in the real issues facing the nation called Kenya. On the side of the government, they would very willingly support this kind of narrative, this kind of move. Because it would go a long way in legitimizing their regime. Okay? And so based on that information, we can conclude that the reason why Rigadi Gashagwa and the government made this very spirited effort to convince us that Raila and Ruto actually met, and then add in that kicker that actually Wame Malizana na Raila, or to quote the exact words of Rigadi Gashagwa, Wamempatiele kitu alikuwa na tafta. They have given him what he wants, and therefore there will be peace in Kenya. The whole objective of that must have been to create disunity, suspicion amongst those in Azimio, and amongst those who are at the forefront of fighting for a better Kenya. And then most of all, to bring down the power and the influence of legendary Raila Amolo Odinga. That must have been the objective. And the fact that they didn't quite succeed should tell any keen observer, should prove to any keen observer that this man, Raila, Sio Kidogo, the faith which Kenyans have in him yeah. The support which he has from Kenyans 
is not easily brought down. Even when you spread such serious stories that imply that Raila Odinga was bribed yeah, to look the other way, to stop mandamano, to stop fighting for the cost of living in the country to come down, to stop fighting for this madness of overtaxation and taxing everything that moves in the country called Kenya, to stop his efforts to try and stall or stop this thing that is hurting Kenyans so much. So what this means going forward is that we all need to be super careful, yeah, especially about the information coming in from the government side. You know, the character of a man does not change. Just like the spots of a leopard or a cheetah cannot change, cannot disappear. A leopard cannot turn into a dove or an elephant. No! It will always remain what it is. And we know very well the characters of those who are now powerful in our government. We have documented facts about them. Yeah, it is not hearsay. It is documented facts, evidence which is in the public domain. Virtually all of them have had cases yeah, which were in court, some of which were stopped immediately they came into power, meaning they found a way to influence the judiciary by using the executive. Others, their cases were dropped in a most brutal manner. Let me just leave it at that. We also know that these same characters are money hungry. They have been involved in documented corruption cases. Some of them have even appeared before a court of law charged with something linked to corruption. And so it would be very naive for anybody to expect a person's character to change overnight. It doesn't happen. It will never happen. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.